Here's here's a couple versions of your title, Ralph Fritchie. Yeah, very good, perfect. Ralph Fritchie. I, perfect. I'm worried about like your name. Fritchie with an F in front of it. All right, Ralph Fritchie, senior project manager for food production in support of deep space exploration. That's pretty good. What about senior manager for long duration food production? I like hmm. the first one better. That's more accurate now. This is evolving over time. No one. It's one of these things where. No one gave me a title, so people would have to say, what do you do? So it's kind of evolved. There's not like something on paper. Okay. And so here's a little like, uh, if you were going to have a movie about your life, this, was, this would be the, the opening sequence where someone reads, Ralph Fritchie, behind the rather anticipated inquiries towards Matt Damon's potato scene, the Martian, and the tremendous curiosities of researchers and space enthusiasts alike stands Ralph Fritchie. Fritchie, a ground, a grounding force of nature within both KSC and NASA, is both comfortable and a curious man. A man whom, alongside of his crew of mastermind botanists and engineers, is looking ahead to the realities of ultimate Earth dependence, life beyond the terrestrial. Did you write that? <laughs> you need to get a job with NASA PAO. Yeah, you know? Does that describe you? Do these things that's, describe that's actually, you? Parts of it are interesting. I don't know that it totally describes me, but it definitely makes it come out as good as it possibly could. All right. Well, let's let's break it down in nuts and bolts. You're a man who has to take the engineering side of things and the scientific side of things, or the, the botanist scientific side of things, merge those two worlds and actually figure out how to get us to grow things in deep space. Is that... that that is true. And, and actually, it's interesting because... That's like an essence that's very hard for people to grasp. It's very hard for the people inside um, where we work. Two years ago, it was extremely hard to grasp mm -hmm. because most of the uh, research effort that we had was strictly on the plant side of things. And you have plant scientists who for years have been trying to engineer as best they could while the engineers were busy doing things like building the space station. Mm -hmm. and, um, so. Now we're at the point where we are trying to really merge those two worlds because in the past, the, the science part could only go so far. Yeah. And the interesting thing is now you bring the engineers in and they don't understand that biology does its own thing. Yeah. They're looking at equations and they're saying, well, this should all work. And if, it, and if, and if the plants don't grow, well, then there's you know something. They look back in their data and they're saying, and they think it's all something that can be resolved from an engineering perspective, and it can't. So the, the real challenge is trying to find these biotechnology people who appreciate both mm -hmm. um, sides of things. So how did you get up to speed on being like, how do you oversee two deeply complex fields like engineering and then science? So I think the thing that helps me is that I didn't have enough of a foot firmly planted in either camp. Yeah. So I didn't take sides. I didn't have an inherent bias. Mm. Uh, so I was able to sit there and appreciate from my past work the engineering side of things and then get an appreciation for the plant science side of things. And, and to realize that to really leapfrog ahead in terms of our capability and understanding, we had to merge those two. And then it's trying to ensure that the new engineers come in, learn more about the plants side of things, the biology side of it, and the plant scientists recognize that they no longer have to be burdened with trying to figure out how to technically make things work. That, what's it like um, on a personal level, like when you're dealing with a scientist, you're dealing with an engineer, just merging the personalities, not just the fields, but the personalities of these different people, and helping one group to see how they're, what they're doing has to integrate with the other group and they can't be on an island alone and be so successful. It's interesting. From the engineering perspective, I've been in, you know, involved in that culture for so long that that's an organizational culture where uh, you have a lot of good technical expertise and what you occasionally will encounter were personalities that want to move up the management chain and, and pride gets into, mm -hmm. into that picture a, a lot. Um, I also see that now the newer engineers coming in in the, maybe the past five, seven years, they have a very wide diversity of skills. They bring in things like they know how to use 3D printers. They understand basic robotics. They understand concepts of machine learning, at least at a basic level that engineers from 20 years ago don't have. Right. So there's a new skill set that comes in on the engineering side. It, from an engineering perspective, I think it's more about skill set and position within an organization. 
from the biology side, you'll have researchers who are very much want to do their own thing. And you know, NASA has a series of objectives and goals. And, and we have to make sure that what the research is that the scientists are doing meet those goals. It, we have, we have you know, elements of the research that's just for primary research, understanding things, why they work, because you want to learn from that. But there's also like, hey, we need to have this problem solved from a biology perspective. So it's trying to make sure that the scientists recognize that their own research needs to sometimes take a back seat to the research that the agency is trying to focus. And that mm -hmm. can be a challenge. You'll have people applying for different grants for things, and then they'll kind of They'll kind of say they're going to meet your objectives, but they sometimes will drift, and you have to keep them on task. So looking for someone who has uh, a similar set of goals and, and that they're really on board with the mission is important. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So it's, that's, it's different. And then you get these people who are researchers who have – I've seen two types. They're the type who will – They've been involved in working for 35 years, published lots of papers. They're experts in the field, and they will want to share that knowledge. They'll want to help the younger generation you know, mm -hmm. provide that knowledge. And you have other people who are very tribal. They want to collect it all, and they don't really want to share it. They want to you know, you know, promote themselves. So pride comes in in a lot of ways in life, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it manifests itself, I think, differently from the engineering perspective but the, and the science perspective. They're two distinctly... Uh, opposite kind of personalities, but they suffer from the same things that we all do. Hmm. How, how you mentioned in the first kind of answer when you talked about the engineers who are newer, fi last five to seven years, are up on robotics, 3D printing, and some of the newest um, machine artificial learning, autonomy, machine learning AI, artificial right, intelligence. Right. So how do you stay up? Because you had to catch up to speed on two fields that are intensely... Um, complex, and then you also have to stay up on that stuff to be able to manage and maintain and make decisions in these as things develop because right. things develop so quickly. And like you right. said, the people that are older that have been around for a while, they wouldn't be great. Um, what's your position, senior project managers? Because these your position requires someone to stay up on that stuff. So it's a very good question. I was actually thinking about this in, in some way last night. Um, I was very fortunate in that, and it doesn't always work this way, that I was originally sitting in a cube with three other people, um, plant scientist, a chemical engineer, and a project manager type. And what we would actually do is we started figuring out that we had to look at food production strategies for long duration spaceflight. We started going off on just looking on the internet and seeing what are people doing now? What year was this? This is like three years ago. Okay. Right. And we, we started looking not only in the space, you know, agriculture arena, primary research, uh, we were looking at terrestrial agriculture. And it turns out that when it comes to uh, how we grow plants in space, maybe about 20 or 30 years ago, when we were originally trying to just see did plants grow well in space, we were actually doing things that the terrestrial agriculture environment was looking at and taking. Well, since then, they deal with similar problems that we do. They're dealing with environmental challenges, trying to produce food in, in not necessarily the most favorable environments, do it cheaply, do it with the minimal resources. So in a lot of ways, there's parallels. They took some of the technologies that we originally, NASA worked on, or NASA scientists and researchers worked on, and they've taken it and they moved it up a notch. And now we can actually go back to them and pull on things more. Mm. So it's actually a push and a pull. We pull things from them and they push you know, things. And, and so it, it's, it's really beneficial now. But what I do is I'll go out there and still today look on the internet and find things that people are doing and try to infuse them back into mm -hmm. what we have. Yeah. And I was thinking it would be really great if people out there doing things in the research areas that could affect food production for spaceflight would be able to figure out how to share that material. Yeah. Um, so I'll be looking at, at science sites uh, on the internet, mm -hmm. um, looking at just news, and, and all of us are kind of good at that. And if we see something that's of interest, we'll share it with the others to see, hey, is there an application here that we can use?